Karina says, I can watch your videos over and over again and not get tired of them. I still learn new things even if I've watched them 10 times. Joshua says, I love Aaron's being his normal goofy self while helping people create beautiful images. Thanks, man. Christian says, I knew from the first video that I had found something life-changing. My first Florin episode has definitely stuck with me. Aaron just exploded with his typical happiness right in my face. I was not expecting that at all. I loved it. Hey guys and welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new, awesome, amazingly redesigned Florin.com. Welcome to Fan Week where we celebrate you as fans. Today's episode is brought to you by Maury Spellman. And Doosan. Today's episode is nice and quick. This is something you can do on just about every image you have. I'm gonna show you guys how to select a specific color range and how to make those colors pop. The first image we're working on is Dusan's image, a wedding couple and uh, their shot of the force. It's a really, really cool image. And he submitted this and was like, what can you do with this image? And I was like, well, that's already really good. But then I was thinking, okay, maybe we can actually take the greens and take them a step further and see what that does. So here's the method. Basically, we're gonna grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. So go down to hue saturation. Now, you guys know hue saturation probably already. You can grab this hue slider and it's gonna change pretty much everything in your image. You can see this color of our couple, they're changing too. All right, we don't want that. We're gonna go ahead and right here where you see master, we're gonna change that to where it says greens. So I'm basically going to select a color range and then we're going to alter that color range. In this case, it's gonna be the greens. So let's look at what happens when I pump up, I'm gonna just pump up the saturation pretty much all the way on the greens. But you can see it's, it is affecting the greens, but not not all of them. It's really only affecting some of the colors in the image. I'd really like more of this. I want the greens to like really show up. So going back to my greens here, basically I've brought the saturation up. I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to bring my hue and I'm going to drag that all the way to the right too. And this is just going to give me a really good idea of where I'm actually affecting my image. And you can see it's really just affecting a certain part of it. So the next thing I'm gonna do, this slider down here, basically what this does is it takes the top color and turns it into the bottom color. So you can see the green range is now being turned into this like magenta range, but it's not selecting enough of my green. So here's the real trick. When you wanna make those colors pop, make sure you actually affect the entire color range. And to do that, let's just bring this over here. You can actually click inside of this slider and move this left and right to see what it's actually gonna affect. If you want to affect more, just click right here and you can actually extend the amount that's going to be affected. So here, as I bring this slider over here, you can see like, okay, what, what is this actually going to affect? I want it to affect more and more of my image. Okay, so here you can see something, obviously we don't want that. So I want to bring this slider, you know, as we bring it to the left over here, we can see this is affecting just about everything. So I'm going to take this and slide it to the right, but just enough to where it doesn't affect the skin tones of my subject. So we're gonna take this here, and I'm gonna click and drag it to the right until their skin tone looks normal, right about there. Okay, so basically what this is doing, you can see our subjects actually look normal, the rest of the image looks pretty whack. Now, we're not keeping it here, this is just a way for us to see what's actually being affected. So let's go ahead and, now that this is set exactly where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and bring our hue and our saturation back down to zero. So let's select those and just type in zero there. Okay, so now we're still affecting the same color range, so I know that if I were to bring my saturation up or down, it's really just going to affect those greens. So with the color range green, what I would suggest doing is bring your hue a little bit to the right. It's gonna make them look either, it's gonna look a little more blue if you go to the right or a little bit more yellow brought to the left. All right, so I'm gonna bring it right over there and then really just bring up my saturation. You don't wanna go too far, you're gonna to start to get things that really just don't look natural at all. But just a little bit and you're looking pretty good. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and close that down. So this is, like I said, it's a really simple, quick technique. The key here is just selecting the right color range. So we're gonna turn this off and back on again. And you can see, it really does make a huge difference in this image and it keeps the subjects looking the exact same. So no other editing, this just, it automatically, it, it pops quite a bit more as a photo. So really cool technique and uh, we're gonna do it on our next photo now. 
So this image is by Maurice Spellman. Basically, we're going to do something really similar, and I'm going to throw in a couple other goodies here. So again, let's go to Hue Saturation. We're going to choose our greens. And in this case, you can see, I, the reason I wanted to do this is because we've got really nice reds and oranges here in our hair, but the greens are kind of, they're just a little desaturated, and I'd, I'd like more of a contrast. Those are complementary colors, and a really nice contrast would do this image well. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go down to greens. I'm going to crank these guys up. And you can see, like by default, we're not really affecting that much, right? It's like, OK, that's the only area that gets affected. So this is when we have to increase this over here and now see where we can actually affect our image. So I want to select it, again, just to the right, just enough to where I'm not actually affecting the skin tones of my subject. So right about there, it looks pretty good. A little more to the right. Got to get it perfect. All right, there we go. So now we're going to change this back to 0, and this one back to 0 as well. So we're going to bring our saturation up, and I'm going to bring my hue a little bit more to the right. Let me bring our saturation up a little bit more. All right. Really cool. So closing that down, we can see what a huge difference that really does make on this image. This is a lot more like reds and browns, and then here these greens really do pop out, and it's super, super quick. All right. So there's basically most of the effect. I'm going to show you guys one more bonus thing on this image that I think would be kind of nice. Um, looking at this image, I really like the majority of the image is out of focus. And uh, we can see like this area is out of focus, that area is out of focus. Um, but this area is just a little bit distracting, I find. that I'd, I'd like this to be out of focus as well, because I'm looking at this because there's too much detail. And really, I want to be looking right, you know, right here at my subject. That's where we really want to look. So easy way to fix this. Just make a new layer, and I'm going to make a stamp visible. Shift, Option, Command, E. There's our stamp visible. Then I'm going to go to filter. We're going to go down to blur gallery, and I'm going to go down to an iris blur. All right. Now here in my iris blur, basically you can click in the middle here and kind of decide where you want the center of your blur to be. So I'm going to click on her eye. Um, this is it's kind of like inverse of what you would think. This is actually what's not going to get blurred. Everything around the edges is what gets blurred. So I'm going to bring my blur up by rotating this dial, or you can do it right over here on this slider. OK, now we've got a couple other controls. We've got our outer radius, which is this guy right here. And then we've got an inner radius, which is this one right here. I would suggest you know, not really having these too close together, because you get something that doesn't really look that realistic. Separate them out a little bit more, and you're going to get something that looks a little bit more realistic. All right, and then you can kind of resize and reshape this as well, depending on you know, if it actually works for the shape of your image. All right. And again, don't go like too, too crazy with the blur because you're going to get something that's just like, you know, it, it, I find it just doesn't look realistic if you go too far with it. But just enough to kind of take away some of the detail, I find is usually what we need. So we're going to hit OK there. And all right, it's going to process for just a second. And then you'll be able to see the before and the after of what it actually looks like. And basically, again, here, the goal is just to like kind of take the amount of detail that's there down by just a little bit, so we're, again, focusing right here on my subject. I might have done that a little bit too much, but I think for this tutorial, it's just fine. You guys can do your own fine tuning. All right, so let's go ahead and group those before. I'm going to full screen this, and then we're going to show you here's the before and the after. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this. And it's something you can do on just about every one of your photos. Whatever the color range is, if you're doing a Little Miss Riding Hood, Red Riding Hood, <laughs> select your red color range. Make sure you get the whole thing and then bring those reds up. It'll really make those colors pop. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release multiple episodes free on YouTube every single week week teaching Photoshop and photography. And if you have any ideas for an episode, please leave them in a comment down below. We're always making these episodes and they come from your ideas. And be sure to share Flurn with every single person you've ever met in your entire life. It might take you days and days and days to compile the list, but I'm sure it'll be worth your time. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, and I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone.